Hi, my name is Jan. I'm founder and CEO of NitroKey and we produce open source security hardware. So that's why we are very much interested in open silicon. And I believe open silicon has a great future. So uh, let's start uh, with a little bit of software history. So say in the 90s, back then uh, most programming languages that were quite low level such as Assembler, C, and C++. I think these languages were the most popular back then. And it was quite easy to introduce memory issues when programming with those languages. Open source software back then was quite unpopular, uh, at least for mainstream users and enterprises. So I remember when buying my first introduction to Linux book, um, it had about 900 pages. So this was, I think, a little bit um, too hard for obvious for, for ordinary computer users. So obviously, uh, proprietary software dominated. And even in the enterprise space, open source software had little acceptance. So I'm not sure about um, other regions, but at least in Germany, Microsoft launched a big advertisement campaign where they made fun of Linux. So um, I think something which is very much unthinkable uh, today. But back then, there were clear distinct uh, parties of open source and proprietary software. And the state of software security in general was quite poor. Um, either there was no security built in at all, or if there was some security measures, they were usually um, not very capable. For example, it was very common to use the Windows operating system as an administrative user with wide region privileges. Network traffic, usually unencrypted, such as HTTP, FTP, TLS. So I hope not all of you are too young to um, not knowing these protocols, but um, believe me, they are usually unencrypted. But still, there were little consequences. I think because, first of all, there were not too many IT systems back then, and uh, second, because they were not used for so critical uh, operations. So this has changed today, where uh, programming languages um, raise up in, in, uh, in, in the levels. They are usually more high levels. The most popular program, ten, mo ten most popular programming languages today are usually memory safe, most of them at least, um, which allows to create more safe systems. And also open source is ubiquitous. Um, it was mentioned earlier, Android, yes, it's not good open source if you want to, but at least it's based on open source. The same for most popular web browsers such as Chrome, Chromium, Firefox, and also in other domains such as uh, the servers. They are usually dominated by a Linux and uh, say Apache stack or some other type of open source stack. These are just examples and uh, I think it's true for many other domains as well. And even Microsoft? They recognize open source now and they ship uh, the Linux for the Windows operating system. So the um, number of IT systems and uh, the number of users and also the complexity of those systems has grown um, by magnitude. And consequently, cyber attacks grew too, so, um, because the more and more systems you have, the more complex they are, the more likely it is that they contain security flaws, and therefore there's potentially more gain exploiting those security flaws. And therefore software security had to catch up and had to improve. For example, now the Linux kernel contains many security features, and so it is for most other successful software systems, they usually treat security serious these days. And thanks to Edward Snowden, um, most 
network traffic is encrypted, whether it's HTTPS or even DNS these days. Hey, and even wi on Windows, you usually use not an administrator anymore, but a usual uh, non-administrator user. So I think overall, open source has won. And the reason is mostly economical reasons, because most open source software is free of charge. But there's another reason and at the same time it's a consequence also which is an improved software security so first of all open source software is um, usually yields to better so better security at least for popular projects because the more eyes look at the source code the more likely it is to find flaws or even backdoors in the system now let's compare this with the state of hardware and with the history of hardware. So back then, um, there were only a few computers in the world. Not, there was no IoT, no smartphones. Can you believe it? And those computers, they were large, expensive, slow. Similarly for the processors, which were relatively simple in complexity and therefore had just um, very few security vulnerabilities. Consequently, for attackers, those hardware platforms, those processors are quite unattractive target. They're just boring because there's not much to gain from. And also looking at the supply chain, they were intact, so it was relatively easy to source uh, every type of IT product worldwide in no time. This has changed today, where IT is dominant. You know, it, um, usually, each of us has uh, several computers wearing at your body, and you're usually online every time. And also, the economy is uh, very much depends in, on, on IT, at least for all large enterprises, this is the case. So processors are produced in large quantities of many millions and billions. And um, every potential security flaw in one of these products then has wide-reaching uh, consequences. So the complexity of, obviously, of processors grew a lot and they are also now providing security features such as cryptographic operations or uh, isola secure isolation. And they become an attractive target for attackers because they like low-hanging fruit. And the more systems there are um, to potentially exploit it with one security flaw, the more attractive it is. And Meltdown and Spectre are examples of those of the uh, how wide reaching those processor security flaws can have uh, uh, consequences. How about the supply chains? Uh, Obviously, they are quite broken today, and this has tremendous economical impact as well. And now I'm risking a, a small uh, prediction on the future of hardware. Um, I think deglobalization will continue, and that uh, more fabs will be built outside of Asia, um, in, say in Europe and USA, maybe potentially even other regions. And this makes uh, silicon production more accessible. Digitalization will keep growing, um, whether it's in private life uh, or in the economy. There will more and more devices and software systems be around and there will be much more dependency than even now. And consequently, this um, yields to a growing importance of IT security and also political turmoil, as we see it right now, uh, contributes to this and makes sec IT security even more important. And I believe that uh, memory-safe programming languages will uh, um, see more adoption in low-level system programming, which increase in overall um, system security, such as operating systems. 
and more and more critical systems, software systems, uh, will use formal verification. And uh, even uh, we in NitroKey, as a small company, even we use a formally verified uh, kernel as of today. So, and these are reasons why hardware security has to improve and has to catch up with software security so that hardware security doesn't become the low hanging fruit and the next target. And that's why free silicon will win. And the current state of uh, free silicon, open silicon, reminds me of the state of open source, source software in the 90s. And I think we can learn from this. So producing own silicon, uh, as you all know, requires uh, precious and, and valuable uh, knowledge, tools, and um, it's cheaper to share this knowledge rather than to reinvent the wheel for each and every participant. So that's an incentive for collaboration. And also large investments are obviously required whether it's by countries or by enterprises. And this is another incentive for collaborations. And an, an openness, an open source, can be, a, I think, an excellent common ground for those countries and enterprises for collaboration, because um, it allows to collaborate without the risk of getting another dependency to another entity. And obviously, it allows us, Free Silicon allows us to create better security systems, to, to create more secure processors. And similar reasons um, uh, were dominant when um, were the reasons to the success of open source software. And this is why I think it's very likely that free silicon will also succeed. So, thank you. And now I'm opening the round for maybe your own ideas or questions. For e-waste, um, I don't have a very strong opinion, so maybe I give it to the expert sitting here. So the statement was about the right to repair movement, which is not the same, but maybe related to open source and uh, might be an, a reason why e-waste can eventually be reduced to free silicon. That's how I interpret the statement. I guess uh, maybe uh, what I was kind of probably use was say modularity, where people can replace saying, I need a new faster smartphone, I can replace the CPU and not everything. Uh, 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 same as the, the, the need to optimize for energy. If I have a use case and I, I want something fast, I want something secure, but somebody else wants something green, I can have multiple. So there, there, there's another, maybe another third flow that, I, that, that we're prodding towards uh, is this, this ecological awareness in the design flow. Okay. Yes, I think it makes a lot of sense. At the first, I did not interpret uh, clearly the question. I was a bit uh, confused, but uh, that's an excellent point indeed. I think it also goes in the direction of the, the reuse, uh, no, the reuse uh, uh, concept. Indeed. Yeah, thanks. Are there other questions? So, wait a second, we bring you the microphone. So, we'll do right. Okay. Um, I, was, I wasn't here at the beginning, but did you talk about hardware tro trojans too? Because I don't know how you imagine decentralized hardware creation, but this is a rising danger, particularly, especially if you have an ASIC that is um, um, produced in different countries and different um, uh, factories. 
Um, yeah, how do you take this problem? Yeah. How to tackle the problem so that. The artist rotation. So, so um, that this one decentralized um, point of, of fabrication of some end product is, is introducing some kind of virus in, in hardware. Because there are a lot of paper about these things. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the um, so the question, how I understand it, is how we uh, make sure that uh, we don't introduce new flaws when using free silicon. But uh, maybe looking at where we come from, from a non-free silicon standpoint, we ha I think we have this um, potential points of in of introducing security flaws and backdoors already. So free silicon, I think, is not a step back, but more a step forward, where we can at least have the transparency and more flexibility to shift around, rather than in, uh, to just trust an, an enclosed silo where we don't have any transparency. So I don't think it makes things worse, but gives us options to solve it, but it's not a solution um, just like this yet. So it's a lot of effort here. Other questions? Yes, uh, let me bring the mic up. Uh, it was more a uh, remark than a question. Uh, possible direction would also be like to have a process to make chips that are lower tech. So it would be more resilient, like to uh, issue from the environment, like when factories don't work anymore. And also it would help also with the uh, Trojan and things like this, since uh, the production would be easier to do it yourself or similar things. I, I think that is like someone who does chips in his garage, Sam uh, Zilov, I think. So it would be a good area to like research. Thanks for the comment. All the questions? I can probably do without the mic then. Um, do you have um, products? Oh, wait. Make sure I get this. Do you have products in uh, progress at NitroKey that are using your own chips, or is that on the roadmap for you? And if it's on the roadmap, any idea when? Um, uh, right now, we don't use any, um, say, open uh, processors. What we usually use is buying off-the-shelf components, such as an ARM MCU, for instance. Um, the reason is that, as of now, we couldn't find any proper better, more open, more free alternative. Um, I hope this will change over time, um, but we also don't have any development project uh, in this direction yet. Excellent. What are the questions? If not, let's uh, thank uh, the speaker again. Thank you.